Okay, welcome back. In today's demonstration, we're going to be talking about getting vendor invoices from your legacy system into the 2020 uh, construction cloud system. And there's really two ways of getting those invoices in. One is importing those invoices from the legacy system into 2020. And the other is manually entering those invoices from the legacy system into 2020. And today we're going to focus on importing those invoices from the old system into the new system. So this video demonstration is going to be a little bit longer than most. We want to really try to make this as easy as possible, but yet cover all the de all the topics in detail enough for you to understand it so that you can do this effectively on your own. Uh, we're always there to help if you have any questions. So right now, let me let me get rid of some of these other screens that we have up here so we can just focus on this primary screen here. Okay, so we're in 2020 right now and we're looking at the vendor invoice screen. And in order to bring that information from our legacy system, there's some critical pieces of information that we need to have on the invoices inside of 2020 to make them match up to our vendors, to match up to our projects, to our subcontracts, and, and to our general ledger. And all of those key elements inside of the new system need to match what they're coming from so that we have uh, accurate reports. So first of all, we have, obviously we have our vendor, so we need to make sure that we're specifying who that vendor is and that we're pulling the information from the vendor from our legacy system. We need to make sure we have the vendor invoice number from the legacy system, the invoice date, and the due date. And all of this should be easily exported from your legacy system. Now we have our project information. So if this invoice is project related, we obviously need to be able to associate this to that project. So we need to know what the name of the project is um, from the legacy system. And then we need to make sure that we have that project created in the new system. We can't, we can't import an invoice from the old system to a vendor that doesn't exist in the new system. We can't import an invoice from the old system for a project when that project doesn't exist in the new system. So it's really important that this key information exists already into 2020 before we're making that import. We can't just import and then have it work. So we have a project here that we need, and we'll select any old project. Let's select one that has some subcontracts. And this invoice also could be related to a purchase order or a subcontract. Again, those items must exist in 2020 if we're going to associate them from our legacy system into 2020. So here we'll select, we can create a new one if it doesn't already exist. But you can see, you get the idea that all of this information here, we're going to be pulling from our old system. It's really important that vendors, that projects, that subcontracts and purchase orders, that those items exist in the new system so that we can tie them together. Uh, then obviously we have our, our distribution items or our line details and all the invoice items. Uh, you can see on here we have an analytic account. You know That would be your, your legacy system job cost code. Uh, we have our general ledger account. So that's our, our GL account from the legacy system. We have category, unit of measure, we're keeping track of retention. Again, there's a lot of things that, that are necessary in order for us to import invoices from the legacy system into the new system. So now what I wanna do is I want to just take an example of an export of a system, export of some invoices from an old system into a new system, and just kind of show you some of the issues that, that are very typical that will probably occur. So, so now we're looking at the export from a legacy system. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna use the, the default tools inside of this spreadsheet application to only show one job so that we can really focus on it. I'm gonna focus on this epic phase two job here so that we can only see the details related to that. So again, this is the information we got out of our old system that we wanna get into our new system here. So if I look at this, I'm looking for a job called Epic Phase Two. This is what we named it in our old system. And it could be named this in our new system and it could be named anything in our new system. And let's just take a look at the new system and see what we named it. 
So here from our old, it's Epic Phase 2. And if we go to our, our new system and we go to our projects, we can see that it's actually called East Plano Islamic Center. So it doesn't even have the same name. So that's going to be our first problem is we need to make sure that the jobs are matching up. And even if they have the same name, that doesn't necessarily mean that the jobs are going to match up because one old system gives that job a specific number to organize and, and keep that job unique. And in 2020, we're doing the same thing. We're giving the job a specific number. So what we really need to do is match up those numbers from one system to the other so that we know uh, th what job this is really supposed to go to. Now we do the same thing for our vendors and for our cost codes and for you know the currency and and the subcontract. So when we look at this this particular spreadsheet, this one's saying that we have these invoices and some of these are for a subcontract and some of them are not for a subcontract. So this is an immediate issue that we're going to have to deal with because it doesn't tell us which subcontract these are actually associated with. It could be in our 2020 system, if we go to subcontracts and we organize our subcontracts, not by project, but by vendor. And if we look through our list, whoops, if we look through our list here, we can see that we have some vendors that have multiple subcontracts here. And they could even have multiple subcontracts per job. So just the fact that we've gone through and we've said, yes, this is a subcontract or no, it's not a subcontract doesn't give us all the necessary information to be able to associate this invoice to a subcontract. Now, this is really what we're hoping to do. And I'll show you in our system here. Let's go and let's look at another job. Let's look at this high point MOB job. If I click on this job and I go look at our AP invoices, now I'm going to be able to see a listing of all of the invoices that we've entered in the system and we've entered them by, we can see them organized here by vendor. So here's all of the invoices organized by vendor. Now I can play with my groupings up here at the top and I'm going to say I want to group them by project. So now when I look at them all, I'm going to see a listing of all of the projects that all of these vendors are associated with. And then I could group them by other items, by vendor or by subcontract or other things. But this really allows me to um, see those vendor invoices and make sure that they're entered in correctly. So once we have all of the necessary information inside of the system, it's actually very easy to get those invoices into the system. All we have to do is select import here and then we're going to choose the file that we want to import and we're going to load that in to the system so i'm going to go to my desktop and i'm going to find um, some data to load in here and i'm going to take these ap invoices and i'm just going to hit open and what that's going to do now is it's going to read the top line of that spreadsheet and here you can see this is the top line of the spreadsheet right here and then it's going to try to associate those automatically to the fields inside of the database. You can see that it, it was able to pick some of them. This is the vendor and here's the invoice date and the vendor invoice number. And some of those things were, it was able to pick out automatically. Um, if you click on the show all fields for completion button, it will usually do a pretty good job in picking up the rest of those line items. Now we really don't need this vendor invoice number here, but all of the required information uh, here's the vendor, invoice date, the invoice number, due date. Here's the price of the, uh, the unit price of the invoice. Um, this is the general ledger account that it's going to be coming out of, the journal, and the description here. So all I would need to do now is click on the validate, and it will read through and make sure that the data inside of that spreadsheet is correct, and then hit import. And then once I do hit import there, then what I'm going to have is a listing of all of the vendor invoices in the system, all marked pending, uh, pending approval. So here I'm going to look at all of the invoices. And I actually did this before I started the video. So you can see all these invoices in here. And they're all marked red. They're all pending approval. So now we can look at them. We can organize them by 
by vendor or by project and just make sure that everything is okay. Once these invoices look good, you can select one or all of them, click action and click on confirm draft invoices. That is basically us saying to the system, we have looked at these, we confirmed that they look good and we're going to go ahead and submit them. And upon sub submitting them, we're actually going to generate those journal entries to the system. And now they're in the system, they're complete, and they're, they're solid. We can't make any changes to them at that point. So I hope this uh, has been a helpful introductory video to importing AP invoices. Our next video, we're gonna talk about entering those AP invoices by hand. Um, also a very easy process. And in this case, when we have you know fewer than maybe 100 or 150 invoices to enter, um, it's probably quicker to actually do it by hand manually than it is to go through and try to make sure that all the fields are correct and those and everything's uh, in the database correct. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of preparation involved in creating an actual import and it's just easier to do it manually. Uh, so we look forward to having you on our next video when we show you how to enter those job invoices uh, against projects and against subcontracts or just entering them into the system. Let us know if you have any questions and we look forward to seeing you on the next video.